Hey, this is Craig the Pool Man with Pool Specialist, and today we have Module 2 of Basic Electrical for a Pool. Now, we're going to talk about circuit breakers, which is what we have here, and we're also going to talk a little bit about relays. Okay, so there are effectively two different types of circuit breakers. This is what I would refer to as a standard circuit breaker and that would be on, that would be off. This circuit breaker does not have ground fault isolation protection. This is what's called the GFI or GFCI breaker, depending on what kind of terminology you wanna use, and it does have ground fault isolation. So therefore, if you were to have water coming to contact with the electrical on the other end of this, it would automatically trip this breaker. However, it may not necessarily trip this breaker. So you'll notice that this has a pigtail on it. This pigtail would have to be secured into your neutral bar. And then your power for 240 volts, one would come out from here, one would come out from here. If you happen to have a neutral, then that neutral would have to come back to here. It, you could not put it into the neutral bar. If you put a neutral into the neutral bar instead of here, this breaker will automatically trip. However, when you're wiring up a pump or a salt system or something of that nature that has 240 volts, typically it does not have a neutral. The only time you would have a neutral is if you were also going to wire in things that are, say, 120 volts, and therefore it will be able to determine what the current going out is and what the current coming back in. So when you turn this circuit breaker on, this is going to monitor the current going out of this 120 volts and the current going out on this 120 volts and the voltage and if you if it sees a differential in voltage of six tenths of a volt or more then it will trip and that's how this actually works if you were to buy a cheap one or an inexpensive circuit breaker such as an Eaton breaker they are really not designed to work with pool equipment and I would strongly recommend that you do not use the less expensive breakers. This breaker right here is probably about twice the cost. Unfortunately, the only company that manufactures the breakers that are designed to work with pool equipment is Siemens. All the other ones are not designed, and if you put them on particularly a variable speed pump of any manufacturer, it will arbitrarily trip. And the last thing you want it to do is you do not want it to trip in the winter time when you're in freeze protect. And that is the most likely time it's going to trip. This circuit breaker was developed in conjunction with Pentair. So if you purchased a Pentair brand, you're actually gonna get the exact same thing. And what it's doing is it's actually looking at voltage that may be in your bonding and voltage in your ground. And so therefore, it has a way to isolate it out and it doesn't falsely trip um, from what's called stray voltages. So you'll notice that this is a lot bigger. If you look at this breaker and you compare it to a standard or a inexpensive GFI breaker, it's about the same size. And that's because it doesn't have this, the additional electronics in it that provides the isolation. So this is predominantly what you're gonna use. Um, code really doesn't allow you to use this anymore. For the most part, in pools, you are always, always going to use a GFI. So this is a double pole giving 240. This is a double pole giving you 240. Then if we come up here, we're coming up to what are called single pole breakers. So this is a standard breaker. Again, that's the on position 
that's the off position. When they trip, they typically go in the middle, but sometimes they will come all the way to the off. This is the GFCI version of it, and you'll notice that it has some electronics in it as well, so that it can determine if there's a false trip. Um, this happens to be a square D breaker, which this is a good quality breaker. And again, you'll see the pigtail. Typically, when you're wiring up lights, you're going to use a GFI or a GFCI breaker. And again, very important is this pigtail needs to be connected into the neutral. The neutral wire coming back from the whites and or whatever you're feeding this with needs to come in to this circuit breaker. So the power will come out of this and the neutral will come out of it because that's how this breaker monitors whether there's water or a short or a problem with the line. So very, very, very important. This is a GFI breaker and you need to bring the neutral back. You cannot co-mingle neutrals. So each neutral is going to have to be dedicated to what you send it to. If you co-mingle neutrals, then this will trip. So when you're wiring this box up, you want to make sure that you pair up your 120 volts circuits, the power or the hot wire with the neutral. And the neutral wire comes back to this circuit breaker. Okay, this is just a standard breaker. Um, most of what we do in the pool industry, you really can't use this breaker. However, I use a standard breaker to actually provide the power to the control box. So here's my transformer. Um, it's going to get configured and wired up so that it's going to run on 120 volts. So the other thing is you cannot have a GFI outlet or a GFI breaker on a GFI breaker. It will not work. So this is a GFI outlet and what you'll notice is there is some yellow tape here and that yellow tape is telling you that the uh, this is where your output goes. So your input is here. So if you are going to feed something that would have the protection of this outlet, it would come out of here. A lot of pool builders use this for their lights instead of using a GFI breaker. I highly recommend you do not do that and you would not feed this through your lights. There's a nice little panel here where you can put your outlet and many places the code requires that outlet to be there on an equipment pad and so I would have a separate circuit breaker for your lights. Do not feed them through here. Also, do not feed the controls for your panel through the light breaker or through this GFI outlet because if either one of those trips, then this turns off. And if that happens in a freeze protection standpoint, you are not gonna be happy because that's gonna cost you a lot of money. So here's my GFI outlet. If you look, this is brass. Black goes to brass, white goes to silver, green goes to green. So this is my ground, this is my neutral, and this is my power. And you're gonna find the same thing over here. So my black is gonna come out of the circuit breaker and it is going to go here. My white wire, which is my neutral wire, is gonna come out of here and go into my neutral bar. And then my ground is gonna come out of here and go into my ground bar. There are distinct differences between your neutral and your ground. You, you do not want to commingle these two. In old, old circuit panel boxes, they are commingled. And um, the ground is the same as the neutral. But in the current codes, this neutral bar has to be separate from the ground bar. The grounding bar, as you can see, is actually attached to the box. And then also the bonding lug is attached to the box. So you're gonna find that your bonding is going to be connected to your ground. 
if you notice this, this is actually isolated from the box. And so if you were to measure the connectivity, there is no connectivity from here to here or from here to the, there or from here to the um, bonding lug. So GFI outlet has to go back to a regular outlet. It cannot go back to a GFI outlet. It will not work. It'll falsely trip. So I would recommend that you get the 20 amp. You also get the tamper proof and you get the weather proof. So you're going to see it's typically like a WT is what is going to be on the rating for this GFI circuit breaker. And then you are going to also want to put a cover on this on the outside so that the water does not get into the outlet and cause it to fall, for, falsely trip. Now this top breaker right here you're going to see takes a single slot and it actually has a 20 amp circuit here and a 20 amp circuit here and that comes off of the same phase. I like this breaker particularly when I'm setting up a control panel because the first breaker I am going to use to go and drive my transformer to provide the power for my control panel. The second breaker I'm going to send out to my GFI outlet which is going to be mounted in the side of the box. And so the nice thing about this is it's only taking up one slot but it's giving me two circuits coming out of it. Again it's where this circuit gives me 120 volts in what I'll call phase one and this gives me 120 volts in what I'll call phase two. Uh, so I wind up if I measure the voltage I get 240 volts where if I measured the voltage across here it would be zero because it would be exactly the same 120 volts here and the exact same 120 volts here. So you would measure from here to ground or here to neutral and you get 120 volts and when you measure from here to neutral you're going to get 120 volts as well. Those are your standard circuit breakers that's what you're working with. Very rarely do you ever use a regular circuit breaker in a pool um, panel. Um, you're using it one to for the control panel and two to feed your GFI circuit breaker. That is pretty much the only reason why you're going to use that. So keep in mind these are relays up here and they take the low voltage that this board provides and turns on a coil in here which then closes this connection to this connection and then this connection to this connection. So typically this is going to be what's called your line or your power in and this is going to be your load which is your power out. Again this is line in power out. So if you had this can handle 240 volts so I have 120 volts on the one phase coming in here 120 volts on the other phase coming in there. If you measure the voltage from here to here it would typically be 240 volts. And then if this relay is turned on then if you measure from here to here you would have 240 volts. You can also just use one side of this um, i.e. if you're using this relay for a light then you would have 120 volt your line coming in here and your load coming out of there. I tend to also like to bring the neutral line into this relay. Um, it just makes it a little bit cleaner and I know where things are. Um, it actually helps prevent false trips to the GFI circuit breaker. So if this was going to be a light relay I would bring my line voltage in here from this to here and then my load voltage which goes out to my light would come out of here then my neutral wire which again is coming from this circuit breaker is going to go here 
and my neutral wire going out to my lights is going to be here. So that's the way that that works. All right, let's talk about this transformer over here. There's a diagram we're going to show you that tells you how to hook this up, what colors go to what if you're going to hook this up to 120 volts or what colors go to what if you're going to hook it up to 240 volts. And here is a picture of that connection. Okay, you can see that in the 120 volt version, I have, it says to connect the black wire to the 120 volts. And it says to connect the violet wire to the neutral. And then I'm going to put a wire nut. And it's very, very, very important that you put a wire nut on this because this has live wire. And if it bounces around and hits the ground or hits the neutral, it will blow out this transformer. It will trip things, it'll cause problems. So make sure you put a wire nut on that. So if you're hooking up 120 volts, this is my power, this is my neutral, this is, has a wire nut on it. Now, if I'm hooking it up to 240 volts, because a lot of people like to use 240 volts, sometimes they use the same circuit as their pump, sometimes they use some other circuit, um, then you can see in the wiring diagram that black goes to the one line of 120 volts. The violet gets the wire nut on it. And again, very important that this gets a wire nut on it that is not allowed to touch the ground or the neutral or whatever. So make sure you put a wire nut on that and secure it very good. And then your yellow would go to your other line i.e. I'll call it a second phase of 120 volts. So if I measure from here to here, then I'm going to have 240 volts when it's connected. And this is going to have a wire nut on it. So that's the basics. We're gonna go out to the field now. We're gonna put this box up. We're gonna put some wiring in it, a bunch of labels on it, and give you an idea of what this should look like when it gets wired up. All right, we've taken our panel out to the job site and we have installed it. So let's go over some of the details that we've got here. First of all, I wanna point out that I believe in labeling everything. This makes it so much easier in the future when people come to work on the panel. If you have to make any modifications, fix things, it's just a whole lot more traceable. So you will see if you could read this one, it says salt system. So that's the conduit that goes out to the salt system. This is a conduit that goes out to the filter pump. This is a conduit that goes out to the pool lights. This was something legacy. Um, we had pulled out an old Hayward control system that just doesn't function. Uh, you know, typical Hayward problems. Um, so we just went ahead and wired this up to the same breaker that they had in the Hayward system, which was a 30 amp breaker. I have no idea where this goes. So, but other than that, everything is labeled as far as conduit. I'd like to point out that I believe that we should always put a GFI outlet in on the side of the panel. They already have a hole for it. Make sure you buy a nice waterproof cover. And, um, you know, you're talking about maybe an extra 30 bucks here. Um, I, I would charge labor to put it in, plus the parts, um, you're already there. But from a service standpoint, it makes it so much nicer if you might need any 120 volts there. Technically, in a number of places, they would require an outlet to be within X number of feet of the equipment panel. So this would then meet that requirement. If we trace back our hot, it comes back up here and it goes to this circuit break that, that I spoke of a little bit earlier. And you'll see that this is a 20 amp circuit, comes down to here, and then the white wire goes up into the neutral bar bus. 
and then the ground goes into the ground bar bus. Notice that this is not a GFI breaker. This is a standard breaker. You cannot feed a GFI outlet with a GFI breaker. It will trip. It causes problems. There's interference between the two. So never, never, never hook up a GFI breaker string strung to another GFI breaker or strung to a GFI outlet. Okay, that's basics. Then this first breaker, you'll notice that I have my control panel wired into this. So if you looked at the diagram on the control panel, it says that the black goes to hot. So the black comes into here. And then if I'm using 120 volts, I take the violet and the violet then gets fed into the neutral line. And then my yellow wire has a wire nut on it. Do not leave this wire nut off because if that grounds out, it will blow out the transformer. It will trip the circuit breaker. It will do all kinds of nasty things because there is voltage going through this wire. So always, always, always wire nut it. Okay, so that takes care of our control. That takes care of our GFI outlet. Next, we're going to talk about our lights. So the lights have to be on a GFI breaker. Please do not run them through the GFI outlet. Yes, you can do that. But the people plug things into these GFI outlets and then they trip them. And then you get a service call that says, well, my lights aren't working. And you go out there to find out that the GFI breaker was tripped because they plugged something into it, stuck the electrical cord in a puddle of water. Who knows what they did? So always have your lights on their own dedicated GFI breaker. And you'll notice that this GFI breaker goes up to this relay. And there is my line side. The load side, I actually have two sets of pool lights that it's driving. So it's going down into my pool light condo. And then you'll notice that the neutral wire coming back from my pool lights. And you cannot commingle neutral wires. Both of these lights are going to the same place. They both use the same neutral wire. So we're okay there, but if you have other stuff, you can't share this neutral wire. This neutral wire comes up and it goes into the GFI circuit breaker. Then there is a pigtail that comes out of the GFI circuit breaker and goes into the neutral bar. This is imperative that you do this. If you put this neutral wire coming back from the lights into the neutral bar, Every time you turn those lights on, it will trip that circuit breaker. It will not work. So be aware that this has to, has to, has to be there. So that takes care of our lights. Then let's go down to our filter pump. Okay, so by code, we have to have a GFI breaker on the filter pump. Uh, you basically have to use either a Siemens or a Pentair breaker they are the it's one in the same and they are the only breaker or is the only breaker that is actually designed to handle pool equipment there is a lot of what i'll call ground noise or could potentially be a lot of ground noise brought in from the bonding if there's stray voltages running through the crown and those stray voltages would falsely trip this circuit breaker so if you think you're going to save yourself and go out and buy an Eaton circuit breaker, it's not going to work. It will work intermittently, but God forbid this circuit breaker trips when you're in freeze protect, and then that's going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. So yes, this is twice as expensive as an Eaton circuit breaker or what I'll call a house quality breaker, but it is well worth the money. So you'll notice that the you've got 120 volts coming out of the one side, and that comes up to our relay on the line. 
and then 120 volts coming out of the other side coming up to the line. Okay, you'll notice there's two wires that are attached here and that's because we have a variable speed pump. That variable speed pump must ha be hot wired and have power all the time. Basically, the power head on it is a computer and that computer needs to be bolt needs to be up and running and ready to go when the control system starts sending it information. So if that control, if that variable speed pump is not booted and running, then it can't receive the information from the control system and therefore it's not going to work correctly. So that's why these are hot wired in. So if you follow that down, that goes down to my filter pump. So that filter pump is hot wired. If you have a Pentair filter pump variable speed, it has a display on it and that display must be lit all the time whether or not that filter pump circuit is on. If you have a Jandy variable speed pump, then you are going to have to take your voltmeter out, go inside and make sure that you have your 240 volts going to it. Now, also very important is that your salt system must, must, must be switched by your filter pump. This is a safety mechanism and it is code in most places. So you'll see that if you follow the load side of this relay, it's going to come down here and go into my salt system conduit. Now, a little bit of hint for anybody that's putting in variable speed, variable speed pumps and control systems. Those variable speed pumps are very, very energy efficient. When you run them at a low speed, it's basically pulling the same amount as a 100 watt light bulb or very close to it. And so typically you are going to run that filter pump 24 seven. Running the filter pump 24 seven will actually make it last longer. Pumps, motors are made to run. They, you know, at this point, the only moving parts they have are bearings. The bearings will last a whole lot longer if they don't sit and get moisture and rust and dirt in them. So run it 24 seven. So the trick is you set your filter pump circuit to run 24 seven and you set it at a low speed. You want to set it at either 1800 RPMs or 30 gallons a minute. The reason why you do that is because the salt system requires 25 gallons a minute in order to trip the flow switch. And you want the salt system to be generating salt 24 seven. So if you set your low speed to be 1800 roughly or 30 gallons a minute, then that salt system is always on. And then you use your features or other auxiliaries to run the pool in what would be called high. So you may have a high mode so that you run it in the morning so that you've got a lot of flow to clear all the dirt off the top of the pool. And then a lot of people will run their spa spill over at night. Again, that's going to be at a much higher speed, help clear off the pool. If you've got waterfalls or something like that, those are all going to be at a higher speed. The higher speeds take priority over the lower speeds. So if the pump is running at a low speed and you tell it, oh, run at a higher speed, it's going to run at a higher speed. It, the highest speed will always take the precedence or priority. So very important that you understand that concept. So that is our basic electricity. You'll notice it is very important that I have my neutral wires separated from my ground wires and everything is in its spot. Next, I want to go over some more labeling issues. Um, you'll notice that I mentioned that this is for my filter pump. 
This is for my lights. Well, on the door of this, it actually has a diagram of these four relays. So as you can see, I have my filter pump, which is already labeled. They assume you're going to use relay, the leftmost relay for the filter pump. And then because I used auxiliary one, the next relay for the lights, I labeled that. If I had something else on auxiliary two, I would label that. If I had something on auxiliary three, I would label that. That way, when somebody comes to services, they know exactly what relay is running what device. Additionally, when you get into the low voltage, I like to label all those wires coming in. So you'll see that this is the filter pump, and that's the control for the variable speed. This is the salt system. This is the screen logics. And then this is just a jumper cable going back to the 485 COM port connector on the main board. So I, it is very imperative that you don't double up wires. If you start doubling up wires, you start running into problems. So the other thing is, if the system locks up and fails, you want to be easily able to isolate out what's causing the lockup. And generally speaking, your 485 COM port fails on a device maybe the salt system, maybe the filter, maybe the heater, who knows. Um, but when you're debugging this, you want to be able to pull each one of these out individually. And you're going to want to know what it goes to. So label everything. It just makes it so much easier in the future when you're doing repairs or expanding the panel. This then, of course, connects to my control board my control board looks like this. So here is my wire coming from my port expander and it is going into my COM port or my RS-485 connector. Now if you happen to have the Easy Touch or the IntelliTouch with the salt system, there is expansions on that salt system. It gives you an extra two ports that are connected together. However, that's generally not enough. So always when you're quoting the system and putting it together, always go ahead and quote in and add in the port expander. It's, it's trivial as far as costs go, and it just makes things cleaner, neater, and much more easy to diagnose. So you'll see the other things on the back of this board. This is if I had a spa side switch that it would allow me to connect up to there, it would go. And then here are my sensors. I've got my air temp sensor. I've got a solar temp if you happen to have solar. And then you would also have your water temp sensor. So I can't remember which one of these. One of them's water, one of them's air, or vice versa. So um, just be cognizant of which one is which and make sure that you've got the right one hooked up. You'll know immediately once you pull up your screen logics and you start looking at the water temperature and the air temperature. It becomes intuitively obvious. This is the connector, what's called a dry contact relay for my heater. So I would go ahead and I would connect my heater up to here and then it would go to what would be called the fireman switch on the heater that would shut the heater off, turn it on, so that this control system is actually controlling the temperature of it. Here's my plugs for my relays. So my leftmost relay, then the next one over, the next one over, and the next one over. I like to keep it very methodical. Again, it just eases up the whole concept of debugging the, the system when you have problems or you're making expansions to it. This is a actuator and the actuator in this case is plugged into valve A. This goes back and then in my program I have it set up so that I can pull the water from the basin of the infinity edge causing the infinity edge to overflow. So in this particular pool they have 
a single pump that handles filtering the pool and then also handles taking the water from the basin and returning it to the pool so that I have a spillover. You'll notice that I always, I'm big on label, so this comes with filter pump on it. And then of course I added this label for the lights next to it. If I had other features that I was adding on, I would go ahead and put those labels on here as well. Now, you have more labels than you know what to do with. Therefore, what I do is I keep them in the plastic bag and then I tape them to the back of the high voltage cover. And so you can see all the extra labels in here. And so now, if somewhere's down the line, they decide to add a water fountain or extra pumps, cleaners, whatever they might be adding, then I already have the label here and I don't have to go searching for it. If you want more labels, you can call up Pentair or Jandy and I'm sure they'll be happy to send you sheets of these labels free of charge if you're a service company. So go ahead and leave these on at the system for the convenience of somebody later on. Again, you'll notice labels. So if you put the front panel on, that I have the controls labeled, each the GFI outlet is labeled, the pool lights, the filter pump, salt system. If you had a heater, that would also be here. Now, it is code in most places that the circuit breakers must be labeled. So if you were getting this inspected and you did not have these labels, then you would be failed. Now they could be as simple as writing this in with a Sharpie. I tend to want to be a lot more professional, so I just bring a labeler with me. And then everything looks nice and pretty and neat and conform. So label your circuit breakers. That's a must for passing inspection. You'll notice that there is no door on here. So for the convenience factor, I have removed the door and it just makes it a whole lot easier to work on this system without the door. And that's very, very easy to do. So if you look on the side of the panel, there is a screw right here. And you will have to remove that screw and then when you open this door, it will come up and allow you to take it off. So if you take this screw out, then it allows this door to get pulled off and it is a whole lot easier to work on the panel with that door, door off and then once you finish your job go ahead and put the door back on and please put the screw back in so that it can't fall off. That concludes module number two of basic electrical for pools. I hope you found it educational and informational. If you did, please drop us a like, subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.